Good afternoon, good afternoon. God bless you all, God bless you, God bless you. Come on in, people of God. I am still trying to get set up on Facebook side, not Facebook, but YouTube side. So I'm having a little technical difficulties. God bless you, Sister Hannah. I am still having a little technical difficulty getting set up on the YouTube side. God bless you, Sister Wanda McNeil. God bless you, Sister Shepherd, uh, Sister Tasha Sharp. God bless you. Thank you all for tuning in on today. God bless you. Come on in, people of God. Uh, you know that it's raining outside. It is raining outside, which means the presence of God is showering the earth. We're going to talk about that on today. I'm going to actually pick up where I left off on yesterday. So I'm giving you to... Uh, a few minutes to come up and then I am going to get started in the word of God. God bless you, Sister Brianda, and congratulations to you, Sister Brianda Clinton now. She's no longer in spot. She's actually Clinton now. God bless you to you. Good afternoon, Sister Angela Glover. Uh, good afternoon, Mother White. So good to see you. God bless you. I am uh, getting started on YouTube side. I have a guest with me on today, Pastor Richard Richardson. Richardson. Yeah. Pastor Richardson. Willie Richardson. Yeah. He's the pastor of Intentional Ministries. Uh, Intentional Charlotte. Ministries located. Uh, 5104 Reagan Drive. Amen. Yes. So he is here today and he is going to share in the word of God with us on today. We got a powerful word for you on today, mm -hmm. so we are excited about what the Spirit of the Lord has to say and what the Spirit of the Lord is going to do on today. If you will give me a few minutes while I get set up on Facebook, uh, YouTube side and look, that button right there, you see that little button? It says share, click that share button and share it with your friends. It is our evangelist's duty to evangelize the world. And you can evangelize the world right from where you're sitting. Amen. So click that share button right there. Go now, click it now while I get set up on uh, YouTube side. Amen. So I am so grateful for all of you. I don't have any music today, so Facebook should not slow me down. <laughs> And how many of you know when it rains, the devil just get busy? Good afternoon to you, Renee Laurie. So glad to see you. And those of you all that are getting on from Intentional, I just shared it. So let the people know, let our followers know that we are on and we are a guest uh, with Bishop Daryl White and Tabernacle Praise today. Uh, this should be good. He kind of caught me off guard, but you're never off guard when you uh, know the word of the Lord and that uh, you are called according to his purpose. So... I'm excited about being with him today. I follow him on a daily basis, and this is just an opportunity and a wonderful time for us to share the word together. He's a big brother to me, and uh, I'm excited of, about sharing the word of God with him on today. So those of you all that are from Intentional, I just shared it on our page as well, on the Intentional Ministries page, also on the Surge page, and it is linked to our uh, YouTube Live page as well. So you can send everyone over there, Intentional Ministries of Charlotte, on our YouTube page and you can go to the Surge page on Facebook and also you can go to Intentional Ministries of Charlotte on Facebook as well. Uh, let them know. This should be good. This is going to be exciting. Yeah, I don't have no notes or nothing, so this is going to be really good. So. <laughs> Amen. So this is, this is, I thank God for my brother coming in and being a part of today's broadcast. I spoke to you on yesterday from a powerful word of God out of the book of uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 55 starting at verse number 10 and 11. So I want to pick up on that today. So if you have not already hit that share button, you need to hit it because this is going to be a very powerful word from the Lord. God bless you, Sister Crystal Reed. There go Mother Betty Lewis going up the timeline. Well, it is time for expected to exceed. Amen. And you are expected to exceed. You have to give me one moment on my Facebook side, um, on my YouTube side, actually, 
the camera just actually went out and I have some people on YouTube that wants to uh, be a part of this. So let me uh, go out and actually come back in. I guess that's what I have to do in order to get YouTube. There it is. Did it come back? No, YouTube has not come back. And these people are excited about receiving the Word of God just as well as you are. So if you give me one minute and you still got time to hit that share button, you still got time to hit that share button. I'm going to actually, I see Sister uh, Hannon is on the timeline, so I'm going to actually just go back into YouTube and allow in there and clean it up a little later. How about that? Amen. Well, listen, this is a uh, time for expected to exceed. You are expected to exceed. The scripture says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that you ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. Sharing 30 minutes of your lunchtime with Bishop White along with Pastor Wilson, uh, Richardson, Amen. Pastor Richardson, and I want you to know that God has an expectation on your life. Yes. That regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what uh, situation you are in, God said you are expected to exceed. So yes, my brothers and my sisters, God wants you to be victorious in all that you do. Amen. And um, I don't know exactly... What is going on with my camera on YouTube? But I am going to have to leave it alone. Uh, Sister Hannon, if you can hear me, come on over here right quick and get these people set up on YouTube side. The devil is already being a thorn in my flesh, and he just won't let me go. So we get ready to go into a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We bless you, God, for another opportunity that we have to live and move and have our beings in you. Thank you for the rain that you are showering down yes, from Lord. heaven to water the earth and cause the earth to bud. We bless you now, God, as your word go forth out of your mouth and accomplish that which is spoken and it does not come back unto you, boy. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 So listen, people of God, I am excited about today's word. I want you to get your Bible. I am going back to the book of Isaiah chapter 55. We're going to begin at verse number 10 and verse number 11. We're going to uh, begin at verse number 10 and verse number 11. Um, and we're going to uh, let the word or the spirit use us. It says, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth neither not thither, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and that it may give bread to the eater. Verse 10, 11 says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of your mouth, out of my mouth, and it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things where unto I sent it. Listen, beloved, God wants you to have two things. He wants you to have seed and he wants you to have bread. Mm -hmm. Seed and bread. But one thing you cannot do, you cannot have the seed and the bread and not have the water. Mm -hmm. The water is the word of God. And just like I spoke to you on yesterday, we're talking about the effectiveness of God's word. He that come up to God must first believe that he is. And he's and what? A rewarder. a rewarder to them that what? Diligently seek him. seek him. You have to believe when you come to God that God's word is able to accomplish what he said it would do. Well, he gave the illustration of rain. He says, as the rain and the snow comes down, right. it comes down for a particular purpose and it does not go back to the heavens until it accomplishes that purpose. Well, the word of God is the same way. 
It comes forth from God for a particular purpose and it will not come back to us or go back to him void. It has to accomplish what he said it would do. Well, what does what did he say in scripture that the rain will do? He said the rain and the snow cometh down and will not return thither, but water the earth and cause it to bring forth. It causes it to produce. The word of God caused us to produce. And not only when we produce, we bear what? Fruit. That's right. And inside that fruit that we bear is more fruit. But that fruit has to be planted. That's right. That's if right. that fruit is not planted and is not watered with the word of God, it will die. If we don't receive any water, we dehydrate and we self-destruct. That's right. Same thing. So now you have to believe the effectiveness of God's word. Oh, this is what I want to get into you. Aside from the rain, the earth cannot produce or reproduce. Aside from the word, we cannot produce or reproduce. Amen. God wants us to receive seeds to sow. Every time he send the rain, he wants us to receive seeds to sow. That's the whole point of rain coming is that he wants us to receive seeds to sow. People go to God and they ask God for a financial blessing. Right. And God says, I don't give out financial blessings. I give out seeds That's right. to sow. Well, talk to me about the seeds. Well, the one thing about seed is, is that uh, seed, once it's planted, it can reproduce. Mm -hmm. So when he says that uh, he gives a seed, when he gives a seed, he gives seed to the soul, the word says. So our job is that when he gives a seed, our responsibility is to take the seed that God has given us and to sow it. And sow it. That's why we always say sow it in the good ground. Mm -hmm. Because if you sow it into bad ground, what happens is, is that the seed cannot grow. If it's not planted properly, it cannot reproduce. And there are only certain seeds that can give you harvest. But That's then right. there are certain seeds that are planted that can only give you singular. So uh, when people say that they want a financial blessing, you have to go back and look at what have you planted and how have you planted. And if you have planted. Because if you haven't planted anything, how can you receive a harvest from something that you have not put into the ground? Mm -hmm. it's, it's scriptural and it's natural. The, uh, the seed of a watermelon is, uh, you know, watermelon is good to us when we, we eat on I know I love That's watermelon. Right. That's right. But the seeds that are in that watermelon, if you put those seeds in the ground and you plant it properly and you space them properly, what happens is you can have a grove of watermelons. From the one seed that was given to you from that watermelon. And that's just how God does. He gives us that watermelon that has the seed in it. And what we do with it, we can eat from it. But will we plant the seed that comes from it? That's why when he gives us our, our paychecks, it's important to tithe. It's important to give you 10%. I know people, they have the argument, that's the Old Testament. Okay, it's a lot of things that are Old Testament, that, that they did in the Old Testament. And if we did them now and go by those things, a lot of us would be in trouble. But it's good to tithe. Give your 10% because he blessed the 90. Now, that's the thing that always messes me up. He gives us, uh, tells us, give me 10%. I will bless your 90 if you give me 10. It all belongs to him anyway. Mm -hmm. But he says, just give me 10% of what's mine anyway, mm -hmm. and I will bless your 90. And if you follow that principle, what happens is that 10%, that seed, of 10% when it is planted properly and you're obedient with it, what happens is God releases the harvest onto you. He releases the harvest to you. A lot of times it may not be money all of the time. It could be health. My mother just experienced a, a harvest now where they said she had cancer throughout her body, but got the report on yesterday that she cancer free. And that's because of the seed that was put in the ground, her seed of her 10%, the seed of her prayer time, 
the seed of her worship, all of that uh, entailed God producing, allowing her to produce a harvest that she could feast from. Mm -hmm. And so the seed is important that when the seed is given, that you don't take the seed and that you hide the seed. But now tell me what happened when you have seed, mm -hmm. but you have no water. Well, <laughs> no seed can grow without there being liquidation. No seed can grow without there being water. Uh, like it's raining outside now. For most farmers, that is the best time when they have planted seeds, when they see water grow. All right, now, this, you got to catch fall. this principle. You got to catch this principle. God's word is water. Is the water. That's right. And his word is going to go forth and accomplish that which is spoken. And it's not coming back to him That's right. until it finished doing what it's supposed to do. That's right. Seeds doesn't sprout up overnight. No. If you want a financial blessing, stop going to God and say, God, I need you to bless me financially. Mm -hmm. Ask you. God for more seeds to sow. Well, I want to call your attention to, to the word of God. Go to 2 Corinthians That's chapter 9. 9 verse 6. Yes, sir. 2 Corinthians <laughs> chapter 9 verse 6 yes, and sir. verse 7. Mm -hmm. Let's hear what the Lord says about this. Because you got to see the effectiveness of God's word. God's word is going to work. He, right. he taught Joseph how to store up. He gave him seed to the sword. That's right. And he taught him how to store up. Joseph and them never lied for anything. Never. Never lied. Never. Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 and 7. All right. This is what it said. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. That's right. And he which soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Mm -hmm. Every man according as he purpose in his heart, so let him do what? Give, not grudgingly or of a necessity, for God loveth who? A cheerful a giver. A cheerful giver. Well, listen, if you got seeds, and you want to be a, a, a blast with blessings running you down and overtaking you, plant those seeds into the kingdom of God. Amen. You have to plant the seeds into the kingdom of God. If you take care of God's business, oh, he's going to take care of yours. He's going to take care of your business. Absolutely. That's right. One thing that God needs more than anything on the face of the earth is for his kingdom to stand. Amen. When you plant into a prophet's life, you receive a prophet's reward. A prophet's reward. That's the Bible. This is scripture, brothers and sisters. Now, not everybody that's teaching the gospel is a prophet, but you should know them that you labor among. That's right. But you have to take care of the kingdom of God. Well, he says this, if you do it sparingly, you're going to reap it sparingly. If you only put a little bit of seed in the ground, don't you expect a whole field of harvest? <laughs> That's redundant. That's right. That's right. He says, if you do it bountifully, then I got that. Listen, okay, okay, now. If, if the seed gets too much rain, mm -hmm. what happens to it? Well, from my understanding, if it, I, I've never I, ever experienced that. But if a, a seed gets too much rain, uh, from my understanding, that the seed can come up out of the ground and it could float away. There you go. Too much rain, when you are not ready for it, can wash your blessings away. So many of us saying, God, give me more, give me more, give me more. And God said, your ground can't handle more mm. because you have not planted enough seed for me to saturate. Yes. When you have a whole field of seed, it takes more than one drop of rain to saturate your field. So God has to shower down on you. When God showers down on you, what you know what God wants you to do? He wants you to be a blessing. That's right. He says, I will bless you to be a blessing. Then I will bless those that bless you, and I will curse those that curse you. How often does God want you to be blessed? That's Can right. I prove it to you? He said, as long as the earth remains, That's the book. there's going to be what? Sea Deep time and heart. Hot, cold. That's right. He's changing the season, and in order for the season to change, guess what we got to have? Water. 
You got to have the word of God. If you want your life to change, you got to have the word of God. If you want your life to prosper, you got to have the word of God. Absolutely. Scripture tells us that. Okay. He says, I'd rather you be in, I'd rather you prosper and be in health, even as what? Your soul. Your soul prosper. That's right. Well, God wants you to prosper, but you cannot do it without planting seeds into the kingdom of God. Oh, glory Bless be God. to God. Amen. My God, my God. Now, he said, if you're going to give it grudgingly, you might as well keep it because the measure that you sent out is the measure you get it back. Is the measure you're going to get back. Yeah. So why would somebody want to give something half-heartedly? I don't know. And, and, and knowing <laughs> that you're going to get a half-hearted blessing. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, listen, Pastor says something that's so good on here. She said, seed, hell, kills your harvest. When you hold your seed. Yeah, yeah, it kills your harvest. You kill your own harvest. Because when you hold your seed, you have no need for God to rain on your field. Pastor, <laughs> it's almost like that because sometimes people feel like that when we talk in this manner that it's so deep. But it's really not that deep. I know that if you've ever dated or, or, or you're married. One of the things that's uh, uh, always uh, the thing that I look at is this. If I give my wife uh, a gift, but when I give it to her, I give it to her angry or I just toss it to her, then the way that I gave it to her, she is not going to receive that as if, as if it was a gift to her because I gave it angrily to her. Mm -hmm. So my response that I'm going to get back from her is going to be the way that I gave it. If I gave it with an attitude, she's going to receive it with an attitude. And more than likely, she's going to give it right back to me because it didn't mean anything because of how I gave it. And that's how some of us do with the seed that God gives us. We give it anger. I'm not going to give to that preacher. I'm not going to give it. And they don't, but it's not about the preacher, the pastor. It's the covenant. It's the it's what the Bible tells us to do. Instruct your seed is God's seed. It belongs when it happens once it gets into the hands of the preacher. That's between God and him at that point. Your obedience opens up the door of the harvest. So when I give to God, I try and make sure that when I give, I don't give angry. I don't give with an attitude. I don't get upset because I do not want God to receive my gift that I'm giving to him. And he turns around and gives it back to me the way I gave it. I would much rather it, than him give me an angry gift or give me back an angry uh, receipt of what I gave him. I would much rather keep it to myself right and wait till the next time when I'm happy. That's why it says uh, that we ought to be a cheerful giver. Because when we give in happiness, we give in joy, then we receive in happiness and we can receive in joy. And I don't know about you, I like receiving gifts when someone's giving it to me and they're happy about giving it to me. That's right. Now, now listen, beloved, I need you to go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. We are almost out of time. Man, we are not out good. of word, but we are almost <laughs> out of time. Listen, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. 18. See, God has a principle. Yes, he does. And you have to follow the principle of God. When it comes to receiving, you got to follow the principle of God. You can go and name it and claim it. If you ain't been sowing no seed, he said the blessings of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow to it. That's the principle. You're just talking in air. That, that is the principle yes, of God. Yes, Deuteronomy sir. chapter 8, verse 18 says this. Yes, sir. But, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, mm. for it is he that giveth thee power to do what? Get wealth. That's right. That he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is. God says, I'm the one that teaches you the principle how to get well. Right. And the first principle is that you have to believe the effectiveness of my word. Amen. My word works like rain. It comes down, it water the earth yeah. so that it may bud, so that it may give seed to the sore, so that you can have bread 
to eat. You don't get the bread without the seed. Mm. Satan tried that with Jesus Jesus. After he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and say, cut all of this out and just cast these stones in the bread. And Jesus said, no, we got to go by the word of God. Amen. Amen. The word of God takes process and process goes by the systematical order that God has laid down. Amen. If you want to be blessed, not just one blessing, but I'm talking about blessings that run us down. <laughs> and take us over. <laughs> Chase us down. Yes, see, sir. see, see, yes, I'm sir. talking about, I'm talking about that when you wake up one morning and all of the seeds that you have planted in the ground has a long line of blades. Yeah. Yeah. And you know that it's doing what God said it was going to do. That's right. Water had to come. That's right. And saturate the ground. That's right. And go back to heaven and come again. That's right. Well, see, God does the same thing with your seed. Every time you plant into the kingdom of God, he says, I press it down, shake it together, and then I turn it over. That's right. God said he would do that. And I'm telling you, people of God, that when you want to be blessed, do not go to God and say, I need a financial blessing. Scripture says he knows what you have need of even before you ask. It comes a time in our life that we have to be obedient to the word of God. You got to sow some seeds somewhere. That's right. That's right. You have to sow some seeds somewhere. God wants you to be wealthy. He wants you to be healthy. Amen. Amen. He wants you to be liberated. That's right. If your blessings are being held up, check your seeds. <laughs> Some of us ain't, and you haven't prepared your ground for an outpouring of God's spirit. That's right. Glory be to God. Somebody sent me an encouraging message today because they heard the word on yesterday and they said, it's raining outside and it reminds me of the word that you gave yesterday that God send the rain. Well, I need to help somebody here. Too many people getting wet help, and help they ain't planting nothing. Help them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, you, you getting wet. And you letting the rain fall off of you and nothing is springing up out of you. Yes, sir. You got to have some seeds. I wish I had two or three people right now yes, that would sir. just give God a break. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To God. Yes, sir. But listen, beloved. Mm. The effectiveness of God's word will do what it said it would do. That's right. Because it cannot come back to him void. It won't. Now, he need a people that will do what he told them to do. That's right. Obedient. It's better than sacrifice. <laughs> we, it, it, it can't get no better than this. No better. Listen, we are not out of word, but we are out of time. And you are expected to exceed. Doesn't matter what situation you're in. Doesn't matter as long as as the earth remaineth, there shall be seed time and harvest. And harvest time. Which means God has to continue to send the rain. Yes. He has to continue to send the snow. Now, somebody, we used to sing a song. My wife, my wife is the one that, that, that does the singing. Okay. And and, and you know, I, I pick it up every now and then. And we out of time. <laughs> but but listen. They, we used to sing the song, Rain on My Field. Oh, man. Oh, Holy wow. Spirit, yeah. rain on my field. And now I've come to the conclusion that it's got to be something in that field for the Spirit to rain, rain on. on. Now, now you're talking. Yes, sir. Because if it ain't nothing in that field, listen, thorns don't need to be planted. Mm. They grow on from the water. Well, yes. Weeds don't need to be planted. No. They grow from water. Yes, if you're going to ask God to rain on your field, Ooh. have some seeds <laughs> in the ground. Oh, you just said something. Good God. We got a lot of people sitting that have not given any seed, and all they are are weeds. Oh, glory to God. 
We don't have time for me to even get into that. I just that just dropped in my oh my god. There are a lot of us, and I I was guilty of that in my younger years that I expected God to bless. But I wasn't doing anything with planting the seeds or making myself even available for God to rain. When he did rain, there was no seed for him to rain on. So when you, when rain falls on ground that is not prepared, weeds form. And you can't eat weeds. <laughs> My God. Right. We got to do this tomorrow. So we got to do this tomorrow. We are out of time. This is expected to oh exceed. I am Bishop White. If you want to be a blessing, my cash app is dollar sign expected. The number two exceed. Amen. May the Lord continue to bless you and have a smile upon you. Bless you.